Hi guys, this is Vidas. And Osha. Let's start episode 127 of Ask uh, Vidas and Osha podcast. Uh, today's question was sent by Lila and she writes, Thank you for all your advice about organ playing, especially the pedal virtuoso course that I'm taking now. Regarding the arpeggios, is it okay to not to follow with both legs when one foot is playing the highest or lowest notes on the pedal board? I keep my other foot on the note that I need to play when switching legs. For example, in case of B minor arpeggios, I keep my left foot on D while keep playing with the right foot upward and backward. I followed your suggestion to use the F sharp minor pedal signs for B minor and it seems to work better. Thank you, Lila. Um, isn't that great that the F sharp minor pedal uh, version works for B minor also? Yes, excellent. Sometimes you get uh, uh, advantages of discovering similarities between the keys and uh, transferring one type of pedaling to another key which works sometimes with sharps sometimes with flats yes that's nice that's really you know a big help and save the time um, so her question is about uh, about body position basically you know. keeping uh, either one foot in place or uh, or uh, moving that foot together with another foot upward and downward. What would you suggest? Well, I would say that most of your organ schools would suggest to keep both feet together. But in case of, let's say, B minor, you have uh, a, in the middle of the pedal board, you have you you use both feet, but then it goes very high then you only need to use the right foot. What about the left foot then? It can, can it stay? stay in the middle, I would say. I Be- think so too. Because otherwise you might fall down on the pedal, bed, pedal, you know, if you will shift your entire body too much to the one side. It's a uh, unnecessary burden, I think. Sure, yes. And in general, it's quite... Uh, difficult to keep your balance on on the pedal board while switching directions yes. you have to push off the, with opposite foot to switch direction of your knees in order not to simply uh, hurt your knees right yes and you know remember that you must feel comfortable on the organ not like on the couch at home, but but still, you know, it, it shouldn't hurt and it shouldn't be very much uncomfortable. And if it feels like that, it means that something might be, you know, wrong. Should Lila stick with the pedal virtuoso course or uh, would it be beneficial for her to supplement her menu with real organ music? Well, definitely supplement it with, with real organ music. Because you might get bored only by playing, you know, exercises. And exercises don't get you real life experiences. Sure, sure. They're isolated, isolated techniques, uh, which uh, develop one certain aspect of your playing, uh, of your skill, which is good. But in real music, you need all kinds of abilities right yes especially you no know, while playing organ you also need to work on the coordination mm-hmm. and if you will play only pedal you know for a long time then you know your coordination might you know not be as as as, as good so you need to combine all those you know practices do some of the pedal work and then do some of the rep- repertoire Maybe play a scale or two, or a arpeggio or two, for starters, for warming up. Yes, definitely. It would be a good beginning, you know, to warm up. And with your fingers, too. Sure. Something technical. For example, I like to kind of warm up with improvisation nowadays. Because uh, I can warm up and slowly, gradually feel the keyboard 
and the pedals too, uh, because I improvise with my feet as well. What about you, Osha? How do you warm up? <laughs> I warm up with dictations, you know, playing to my students. It measures. Because I have so many, you know, <coughs> classes that I teach, 27 a week, so I get plenty of warm up. With my hand, at least, you know. Do you play the same dictation over and over again every, uh, the same at the same day, or you have different ones? No, I have different classes, so I play different mm. dictations. Some, some of them, most of them are actually three part dictations, but some are two part, and some is only one voice. Uh, do students like those dictations? Oh no, we hate them, most mm. of them. Do you like them? Well, yes. Why not? And why do you like and, and your students don't? Because I can have you no know, a music score in front of me and we just have to write it down by ear. So that's uh, another story. And we are hard dictation, so I understand why we don't like them. Do they have syncopations? Yes, yeah, syncopations. Dotted rhythms? Suspensions, dotted rhythms and all kinds of things. They're like short musical compositions. That's right. Like preludes of yes. eight measures. Yes. Uh, and sometimes they do sound like preludes when they are three, four parts. Yes, those three part dictations you could play them as a preludes. Mm -hmm. Even uh, I would say two part dictations sometimes yeah. sound convincing. Because we have like secondary dominance and some of them have modulations even. Mm. So. So so you teach your students the skills for real life improvisation I think well yes but you no know, dictations are mainly you know uh, meant to improve the pitch musical pitch mm -hmm. hearing to, to help them understand what they're listening to sure in real life and that's not necessarily enough for uh, creating your own music right that's right you have another class harmony yes which is a transition between between playing repertoire uh, listening to what you play and then uh, improvising creating your own music uh, harmony is sort of in between step right that's right it's very important to know Good. So um, Lila should also supplement her her exercises to with real music. You think? Yes. Yes. All right. Um, uh, what about? Uh, let's see. Uh huh. Um, what about uh, other uh, pedal virtuoso exercises? Uh, I have. I think. Uh, uh, not only scales there, but also uh, arpeggios over the tonic chord, mm -hmm. arpeggios of the, over the dominant seventh chord, mm -hmm. arpeggios over the diminished seventh chord, and even uh, I believe chromatic scales w w with single voice and with octaves. So it's a really comprehensive uh, approach. Not too many people finish what they start, as I read, but those who do, uh, then thank me later, and thank themselves too. Yes. Excellent. Uh, so if if you have the stamina to succeed, if you really wanted so badly to develop your uh, uh, ankle flexibility, like Marcel Dupre taught. Um, so then, then playing scales, arpeggios, and uh, with one foot and both feet is very beneficial in the long run. But you have to not forget the real music. Yes, definitely. You know, the real music is the most important thing. All these exercises we supplement the repertoire very well. Uh, they are servants sure. for repertoire. Yes. Yes. It's it's not the goal to master those uh, exercises it's a means means to it's a tool yes they have to serve you and if you don't enjoy playing technical exercises don't play them right 
this is for people who do enjoy, like Lila and others, and uh, hundreds of others actually, who, who love uh, isolated technical exercises, but other people cannot stand them, so they do something else. We need to always uh, find the balance between what we can be passionate about, right, and, yes. and what we can do long term. Thank you guys, this was Vidas. And Osha. Um, please send us more of your questions. We love helping you grow. This is really fun. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen. <laughs>